The last round of la la last round of la la last round of Listening to the last roundup horror show, I am Frank. With me, as always, is Jason uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and John. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what's up, John? What's up, dude? How are you, man? I'm good. All right. Well, we're uh, we're about to dive into some some fun movies. So it's a wide variety. Um, mm-hmm. Let's start it out with 1989's Sleepaway Camp 3, Teenage Wasteland. Summary for this film, after murdering a young girl, Angela Baker assumes her identity and travels to Camp New Horizons, built on the grounds of the camp she terrorized the year before, and starts killing again. Directed by Michael A. Simpson, who directed the last one, and written by Fritz Gordon, who also wrote the last one. A uh, fun fact about him... Uh, that's not his real name. His real name is Michael Hitchcock, and he is an actor who has been in a lot of Christopher Guest movies. Have, are you guys familiar with Christopher Guest's? Uh, oh yeah, the Final um, Tap and the, and uh, A Mighty Wind yeah, and all that. Yeah, he 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 is in all of those. Um, it, if you look him up, you'll know you'll recognize him right away. You'll be like, oh shit, it's that dude. Um, he's from Defiance, Ohio, though, so. Um, I, that's a, just a fun, fun, fun little fact because it was just a pseudonym. Fritz Gordon was what he was using to write this. Uh, so that's so that's where that's where they got Defiance, Ohio from. Yeah, probably. when yeah. they're when they're when they're saying where they're from, I think the one of the girls from Defiance are like, ha ah, like how do you pull Defiance out? Of <laughs> oh yeah, yeah the, the redhead. She was yeah. from Defiance. Yeah. Or no, wait, no, she was from Iowa. Never mind, my fault. Oh yeah, you, you keep saying Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> Um, do you have any information on this, Jason? Uh, tagline, she's back to slash last year's record. I don't know who this is distributed by. Um, uh, was right out on now, Screen, yeah, Screen, well, Screen Factory, Factory yeah. on, on Blu-ray uh, 2015, but it, it's it's out of print. So if you find yourself needing needing to have this for any reason, you're going to you know, pay up for it. <laughs> yeah, big I don't time. know what that reason would be, but... Uh, completist, I guess. Uh, cast highlights for this film: Pamela Springsteen is back as the Bizarro Angela Baker. Um, <laughs> Michael J. Uh, Pollard uh, is in this movie. You'll recognize him. He uh, he plays Herman in this film. Uh, he he was in American Gothic, uh, which he's great in that movie. And he was in Scrooge. House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh What's yeah. That? Was Scrooge. that Scrooge? He was oh, yeah, Herman yeah. and Scrooge as yeah. well. Yeah. He's like Herman in every movie. Yeah, <laughs> he's Herman. <laughs> he's great though. Uh, rest in peace, uh, though. Yeah, yeah. He passed away not too long ago. Um, right off the bat, I like the soundtrack choices in this. I, the way they bring in the title card, we were listening to it a little bit. It's like this heavy metal yeah, song. It awesome. It's a great way to kick it off. Uh, and immediately, I already enjoy it more than the last one. So. Um, it's weird. I did really enjoy this more than the last one. Um, Ma- Michael Pollard and the lady who plays his wife, they're like the owners of this new camp. They're fun characters. Uh, I like the way they introduce all the different characters too. Uh, I think that's what part of it. I like the characters more in this. The, they're um, they're more fun. Uh, Angela, There's more of them. <laughs> yeah, Angela... <laughs> Angela is also not nearly as annoying in this movie. I think it's because she has to not be her annoying self, which she, she's like disguising herself in multiple ways. <laughs> she's like three or four levels deep from who she originally was uh, at this point, but regardless, it's not as annoying. So whatever they need to do. Um, I think that the newscaster drug deal scene is pretty fucking funny. Um Hey, you look a little older than the rest of the kids. Uh, got any Coke? What, what's up? <laughs> um, uh, we didn't, I don't think we mentioned it in the last. This is the same exact camp. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, 
we didn't mention it though in the last one. There's just this big sign in the in the mess hall that says camping. And it, it it's just <laughs> so perfect um for the quality level we're mm-hmm. talking about here. Um the, this movie was shot right after the, the like immediately after. Uh but it seems more modern for some reason. I don't know if it's because of the hairstyles, there's not as many mullets, the mullet counts a little, you know, reduced. Um cool uh detail is that they made one counselor the father of sean from part two who if you remember had his head severed and put inside of a tv for some reason um i liked i liked that um it's saturday the 14th for some reason um that's just cool i guess (laughs) Uh, just a riff on friday the 13th pretty much Uh, there, you know, Herman, uh, the, you know, we, he's the owner of this camp. He's fucking around with this one girl and I don't understand what she stands to gain <laughs> from this at, at all. Um, it's the it's, same way with the first one that, that blonde is Mel. like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, it's like, Oh uh, God, yo bag. <laughs> but at least he could do something. Mel could do something. It doesn't even seem like she, this dude could get her extra hot fries in the in the lunchroom. But um, <laughs> when uh, when Angela kills uh, Jan, she says, "Good thing you're dead, because in a couple years your breasts would have been sagging something terrible." I got saggy tits. What's wrong with having saggy tits? They're fine. They're fucking fine. They're just looking for a reason to kill. Be rather. You'd rather. Yeah. Is, there, is there any woman that would rather be dead than? I don't know. Uh, it's uh, sort of. <laughs> it's sort of weird that there, there's one point where this girl has to go pee, and they the counselor insists that a guy goes with her into the woods. The buddy system. But what if she had yeah. to take a shit? Like. That'd be weird. That'd be weird. That'd be a weird moment for that. That <laughs> those two friends in the woods. Um, the one thing I didn't like, I thought the last movie did better was was the kills. The, all the kills seemed really muted, and cheaply executed. Like you didn't really see much, uh, unless I watched a cut that was. Yeah, I was wondering that. I was well, wondering so, that myself. Yeah. So there's a there. I don't know why I wouldn't have had the uncut version on the Scream Factory. To, yeah, uh, but I, when I was looking at run times, I noticed there's an uncut version that's like ten more minutes because this is like an hour twenty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and so I saw an uncut that was, had like ten more minutes on it, but I've never heard anyone talk about it. I've never seen it, and it's not on this disc. So weird. My run time, be... my, my run time's an hour nineteen, hour twenty. There oh. should be some splatter somewhere, you know. Like, it didn't seem like there was much of that at all. Yeah, no, and they both said that both of these budgets for two and three both said four hundred sixty-five thousand, and there is no way they're on the same budget. Right. There's, there's absolutely no gore, there's no blood or anything in this. So, like, oh, they, they wrote, wrote four, they, they wrote this sixty-five thousand into it. They wrote this script while they were making the other one. So this, I'm was guessing, like, I'm guessing you know, the this is leftover shit. Probably. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm guessing they went. They probably spent more on two than what they thought, and then did what they could with the rest of the money to make three. Yeah. Um, this movie has one of the most racist scenes I've ever seen uh, in, in a movie. Um, yeah. Oh, I, I the girl says I never, or what, what, I never said I like country, but I'd rather listen to that than a bunch of darkies who can't sing. And uh, then Riff calls her a bitch, and the counselor's like getting on him, like doesn't say anything at all to the girl that's just being completely racist. Yeah. And then she says a line that I will not repeat, and uh, he comes oh, yeah. at her he with an and put, he puts <laughs> a bowl of food in her face, and then that, the counselor jumps his ass again, and I'm like, you're lucky that that bitch yeah. didn't get fucking knocked out because the thing whatever i forget the exact line she says but it is fucking well it, it's yeah, it kind of happens bad. in like the, the beginning too where uh the the black dude tells the other guy to, to suck his dick or whatever and they get into a fight well the, the white dude i'm pretty the, the white dude punches him and yeah. all the all, all the black dude said was just suck my dick but he, he he's, he's like 
separating the two and going after the, the black dude. Because <laughs> yeah. I was like, the other dude swung on him. Like, why don't you get him and get him yeah. out of here? And I mean, don't get me wrong. I love 80s breakdance music as much as anybody else. But if you were forced to listen to this riff dude's uh, jam box yeah, it, it all the fucking time, he, uh, first thing in the morning, boom. Do, 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 do. Come on, dude. Don't do that. <laughs> no, no, I mean, for, yeah, give it a break. But how, And geez. think about how many batteries he must have been lugging around. This, <laughs> this, this thing took like six or eight. Uh, I mean, like yeah, those are deep. Yeah. yeah, yeah, big time. Um, but she, this girl, bla- uh, blasts another M bomb right off into the woods, while uh, Angela's taking, taking her out with this weird trust game they were doing. Um, oh yeah, where she kill? Does she kill her on the flagpole or whatever? Um, I think she does. Uh, yeah, I, I think that um, the cast in general, uh, like, seems like a. Whenever they're talking to that one dude, are you in a gang? Like, yeah, yeah, I'm in a gang. Like, shit like that. I like that. That's good stuff. Uh, more of that, uh, less of Angela, I guess. But um, <laughs> Angela raps in oh, this yeah. movie. <laughs> Angels are pretty. Angels can fly. And here is an angel that can make you die. You've got no style, you've got no flair. All you do is fight and swear, so say your prayers and make amends, because your last story is about to end. <laughs> it's very, very bad. Um, and, then, and then this cop dude, this guy, who they build him up. It's this dude's fa- uh, father, uh, anticlimactic death. I've never seen. He, like, basically just lists off a bunch of different ways that she could kill him. Then she just kills him. He doesn't even seem to try to fucking stop it um mm-hmm. but i i did like the end of this movie angela sets some weird trap um uh with three different cabins it's it's like the best kill in the movie i think it it might even show a little something these things come down and stab i don't know oh yeah uh, that's right yeah <laughs> even though i don't understand why nobody can seem to stop this small like small to regular size human woman i enjoyed this movie uh way more than the last one for what for whatever reason the kills weren't as good as either of the previous films but the acting was schlocky in a way that i really enjoy um it's bad this is a, a bad in a good way for me seven out of ten so where are you guys at oh, good lord uh, i'll go so 80 slasher uh, it's silly. It doesn't take itself seriously whatsoever. Uh, it's filmed back to back with part two. Like I said, I don't think this had the same budget as as two. But uh, for me, there's not too many good things to say about it. Um, I guess a, a few of them is uh, Michael J. Pollard. His his character is creepy and just just makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. But I I kind of like it. Uh, I like the setting. Uh, there's lots, lots of nudity in this, lots of titties. Uh, the flagpole kill that that was that was the best kill in my, in my opinion. I I like the I, I just I just like that kill. Like I, I know it's not practical, her pulling her up the flagpole, letting her drop, but good kill. And there's just, there's no plot in this whatsoever. It's just kills, and for just being kills, there's no there's no gore. Uh, I th- I think Angela seemed like she was even bored herself in this movie. Just like <laughs> ran, it's just God, I gotta go kill someone. Just kind of just walking around killing everybody. <laughs> she seemed bored to me, so maybe that's kind of why you might like her a little bit better in this one because she's not so annoying. Like she's just yeah. really just walking around. That's all I needed was a little, just, a little bit of a downplay. She just, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's just more chill in this one. Like she's completely used to killing seems bored to me um it's a bad movie but i still can find enjoyment out of it uh i give it a five what do you think, John? yeah yeah i'm 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 in the uh the camp of i like this much better than two as well um the sheer difference between original angela and this angela of part two it's so it's such a stark difference. It made me not like her. But now she's had a movie to get under our skin, right? You're, and you're, it's like you know she can only expect. go up from there, right? She can only go <laughs> up. 
So, I like, dude, the the garbage truck opening, Angela's right. back written in graffiti on the wall. Oh yeah, man, <laughs> come on, that was the awesome. speed metal song. <laughs> 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 like this was this was a fun, fun, fun movie. Um, I think that was the most blood too. The blood running down the uh, the boy. garbage truck. No, <laughs> just a few looked, streets. I think that was it. Yeah. If there's an uncut version, all that blood was put to use. But it just for some reason. I don't know. I, I don't know the way. Like, there has to even be. like the like the kills. I mean, they're not even like they're on screen, but you like, you don't see it. You don't do you see think, anything happen. Do you think they had to like? No, I just think they were edited. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, like, the 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 tent kill. I like what she yeah. drove the tent stakes through his hand uh, and yeah, made him cool. stay stay in place. I like I like that. Yeah. Do you that think was really that they cool. they pared down the violence? because there was so much gratuitous nudity in it because that seems like they were like maybe bordering on an NC or an X, whatever the rating would have been at that time. Probably Because there's one scene when the, there's like all the girls are just not topless, you know, like, am I right? Or am I thinking of the last movie? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah definitely definitely more in this like one. there's one scene where they're just like all topless in the one room. Oh, this movie. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were. I, know, I knew at least two. The the, the Chinese looking chick and yeah. then the whatever the other one, the short. The big it just kid. seems like they would have had to cut, decide one way or the other which way they were going to go with it. You know, to get that does that rating. stuff matter if it if it, if it doesn't have a theatrical release? Like, does it matter? Like, if you're oh, having an X rating or R yeah, rating? it's yeah, it's a it's a the ratings see all. You know, they govern it. They govern even on uh, if it's like released through a like MGM's home video label. Well, I mean, yeah. I, I guess if, you know from a, from the from the movie maker's perspective, like, are you if if it's not getting a theatrical release, like, are you worried about what it's really rated? Well, at this like, point, I, oh, it no. would have got. They wouldn't. I don't think but they had NC seventeen at this point. They, it would have been X. They would have put yeah, it. Okay. Oh, X yeah, okay. It. So if it's so, too, yeah, I, I I didn't think about that. If it was too bad, they can't even release it. Yeah, but that might not yeah. be even the reason. Maybe it was just. Um, you I think know, it's budget. I think it's all budget. Yeah. Could have been. Uh, John, but, what else? Uh, would it... Oh, go ahead. No, I well, I was oh, going to oh, go back to you. Yeah. Oh, my fault. Uh, love when they reeled in the hockey mask. Oh that yeah, was funny. Yeah. You know, Saturday the fourteenth. There's a hockey mask and stuff. Uh, what was up with Snowboy, the 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 punker looking dude, and the other guy sleeping halfway out of their tent? Is the tent that small? Because <laughs> like I was just so confused on that. It was like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just easier to kill, I guess. Um. Oh, what about? <laughs> this is another reason I love it. The, the whole Angela takes over that specific girl's persona to just get back to the camp. Like uh, <laughs> I want to know the process. How did she find that chick? How did she find out about this camp? Where the hell has she been? Okay. There's no pictures. All right, cool. I want, I want like the shadows of the empire version, you know, that would took place between Jedi and empire. That was a great book, but like, I want that. I want, this in the comics, what like a lot of Star Wars comics will say, this takes place like three hours before the Death Star blew up. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like they do that kind of stuff, you know. And I would like to see like an in between, like sleepaway camp two and a half. What's Angela up to? Bah, bah, bah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but overall, definitely enjoyed this much more. I was used to this Angela. Um you know, from the last one and the last one, it was so annoying. Um, but this one, I was, I thought, I thought maybe I got, I got screwed because I, I, all the gore was cut out because it looked like it was shot. That stuff was made, but it was cut out. Like it, the the effects were there. You know what I'm saying? I don't, they I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, I really think they're there. They were just. Angry. I mean, it has to. It, it has to be if if yeah. it's ten minutes longer. Right. I mean, it has to. What else is there? Like right. I almost know, think walking around. I almost think they had a little bit of budget left, and they were like, 
Let's do another one, guys. We're already here. Yeah, we yeah. got the campground for two more days. Let's do yeah, it. They yeah, they finished early, too. <laughs> yeah, they're like, they sent um, Estevez home. They're like, eh, we can't really afford you anymore. And then yeah. they took that money and reinvested it in some blood. They got a bucket of blood or something. <laughs> yeah. I like I the... Uh... <laughs> The whole ambulance scene that was <laughs> funny as hell like she's all like sort of gutted you know yeah. she was stabbed a couple of times and she's totally dead and then she kills that guy and then isn't yeah. there is something else written isn't there something written somewhere at the end it was like oh i don't know I, yeah i, I think know, so i just love those guys something like i love that. how those guys are like we should kill we should just kill her right yeah we just yeah. killed her <laughs> You just kill yeah, her. She's mulling <laughs> that over. That was hilarious. Yeah, but well, uh, what... be that as it may, I gave it. I gave it. Um, still a six. I'm. I'm. I'm enjoying talking about it more than not watching it. But I still yeah. enjoyed I, watching I, it. it. Yeah, I feel like it's, I feel it's like, like it's like a probably, fond memory. Let's not ruin. We probably it. Like, all would have had really a higher. <laughs> right. All had a higher score. Like if uh, we we had watched this one together. Oh just, yeah. Just oh do, yeah. Uh, this is a part of yeah. Just comment yeah, this, commentate the yeah. yeah. Oh god, yeah. That's definitely would be better as if for like a watch party situation or something like that. Oh mm-hmm. totally. All right. Well let's go to 2018 and talk about the farm. Uh, summary for this film, a young couple gets kidnapped and treated like farm animals after stopping at a roadside diner to eat meat. Written and directed by... <laughs> Did you guys see this name? <laughs> oh, man. Did, we what? Uh, Did you see this name? The director, the writer-director? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you. Go for it's, it. It's uh, Hans Stigernersward. Huh? I'm gonna say that S and T is silent. I'm, Str- I'm thinking Str- 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 Swore. Str- I don't know. I'm thinking. Uh, I'm thinking. Honestly, I'm thinking Stern Sword. Stern Sword. No, but yeah. Hans Stern Sword. Yeah. Stern Sword. Do you have uh, any information on this, Jason? Uh, tagline and. In this place, you're the main dish. Again, I don't know who this one was distributed yeah. by, uh, and I don't even know if it has a physical release. So, no, I guess I don't have much to say. Um, there are n- only a few things I don't like about this movie. Um, so I figure, why not get them out of the way? Uh, the kennels they use to house these prisoners are very flimsy. Yeah, I yeah. feel if I, I have one of these. Uh, I feel if I were put inside of one of these, I could stand up like a man and break it up, break it open. But just a uh, swift, swift kick, even yeah. just a little push of your foot. Yeah, they're very flimsy. Um, my second problem is I never feel that it's necessary to kill a baby. Uh, you might as well just show like a close up of a bisected penis if you want some instant shock. <laughs> I mean, that would work every time. Um, Fun fact about that baby, though, um, his name is Hollywood Lee Dupree and is seemingly being forced into showbiz by his terrible parents who have done this with his two older brothers. All these people are deaf. This whole family is. Uh, Since his birth in 2016, he's been in five short films and worked on five feature films. Um, They all seem to be horror. So this kid is going to be fucked up. <laughs> wow. Like they're just putting their baby in front of demons and monsters and uh that's got to be damaging. I mean, I don't know. Maybe this is me. Um my third problem is I don't like the handicapped character, the mentally handicapped gentleman. Uh you could have cut him right out of the film except for like his gas station scene um at the beginning. Uh, I just thought he was. What do you mean you don't like? Him? Which, I think he takes which, me out of the movie. There shouldn't be any other talking except for the the o- the owner of the property or whatever. Oh, oh the, the oh, millie handicapped guy I that see. is at the he's at the. 
I guess I like the old lady at the beginning. She can have a little scene. He could even have his speaking scenes at the gas station, but when they involve him later on in the movie and he's running around. And no around, one else is talking except yeah, for that one guy. Yeah, they, it, it would have been so much more ominous and worked a lot better if they would have just cut that character out later on in the movie. Um, and I don't understand how the dude escaped his cage. I mean, I, I am assuming he stood up like a man and kicked his way out of that yeah. thing like, uh, like I would. But they don't show it. They don't show how he gets out. Um, yep. And right. the last thing I have a problem with is why the fuck would you use the final shot of your film as your poster art? <laughs> uh, that doesn't even make sense. They spoiled it right there on the front of their film. Um, whatever though. Yeah, was... uh, positive things about this movie. It's only an hour and 20 minutes, which I think you both know how I feel about horseshit filler. And uh, this is a fairly cut and dry situation. I like the landlord character. I think he's perfectly creepy. He could have even been a little bit more ridiculous, and I think it would have worked. Um, the The tone of this movie has like Texas chain, Texas Texas chainsaw. Chain, Texas, Texas, chainsaw. <laughs> Texas yeah, chainsaw. Show me a sucker. Texas chainsaw massacre vibes. Uh, I think. I like the setting. I like the silent mass farm hands. Uh, I kept waiting for one of them to talk and run the whole fucking thing, but they stayed true to that. Uh, disturbing com uh, concept inseminating women to get them to produce milk like dairy cattle but my my wife pointed out how the fuck would they know when they were ovulating because it's only like three days you can really do get get that going um doesn't matter to cattle yeah and the <laughs> the the milking devices were clearly repurposed plungers like with two <laughs> being attached to them so um i like i like how nobody survives um, I'd like to see some sequels pop off of this. This would be a good thing that you could keep going for a while. Um, overall, I think this is a good film. Uh, this couple wouldn't survive this situation. So it makes sense for them both to die. The dude is far too naive through the whole thing. He's unassuming and overly helpful and involved with other people. And the woman makes just mistakes and mistakes at one after the other, just trying to leave the farm, just go in one direction and keep fucking going. Yeah. yeah. Not once she was just hiding in brambles and bushes. <laughs> I, um, I gave this a, uh, an eight or eh, a seven. I'll give it a seven. We'll stick. With that. Better keep going down. Better keep going. No, nah, I'll stay with a seven. <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. It was a good movie. Okay. Well, I'll go. Um, yeah. I didn't know really much anything about this. I didn't watch any trailer. From the poster art, I kind of gathered what what this movie was. Um, and then I saw people calling it a cannibal movie. That's a little misleading, at least if you're talking about the cannibal subgenre of horror. This this isn't a cannibal movie to me. Uh, it would just kind of be the exact opposite, Frank. Uh, I, I, and I even broke this down, positives and negatives, and I, I don't really ever do that, but that, there's only a couple of positive things I can say about the movie. It's, it's shot well. I like the setting. Uh, like all, the, the production is there. Like It, it looks good. Uh, music is good mm -hmm. uh, in spots. Other than that, that's, that's about all I liked about this movie. Um, I, I think it's bad writing. There's lots of plot holes. There's editing issues. There's several scenes that just go on too long. Like you're talking, you were talking about you don't like a bunch of filler. Your life's an hour 20. They could have shut or cut 20 more m minutes off this movie. Like him walking around from building to building, that scene lasts like four minutes. And that's literally all it's doing is following him walking around. And no normally, one's saying anything. I think it's just shot well. Like that, I liked how yeah. it was shot. It yeah, was like. Yeah, that's what, well, but um, for, for artistic. four minutes. Oh, oh you mean the, you mm. like the way the filler was shot? The right. four well, minutes maybe maybe this it. movie, this movie <laughs> there wasn't a lot happening. It was more like you were just, it was more like walking through a, a display. It, like, that's how I felt. Catering company. It was like, um, <laughs> it, it was like, you know, those boat rides where you get in them and it's spooky shit all around you. That's what it was like. Um, I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't need, I don't, I don't need four minutes of following a guy walking around. It, it, it just it, it was slow it was boring um i don't i don't care for any of the characters except for the one guy like i uh 
what I guess he's the boss or the, the owner or whatever. Yeah. He reminds me of another character. I was never able to put my, my finger on it. It was like the way he spoke. Like it almost sounded like uh, the <laughs> oh shit. What's it? I'll, I'll go get the Kodak. What's that? Mother's oh, Day. Mother's Day. Yeah. Like something oh, about oh, like like, yeah. like that dude mixed with <laughs> Drayton. Mixed I, that dude with Drayton Sawyer. Yeah. And, there's a bit of Drayton. Oh, yeah. totally. I, I, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't quite put my finger on, but I guess it's probably a mix of a few different characters. But I, yeah, I liked him. Um, I just I. Why I don't understand why the farm workers had had mask on. They didn't say anything. They have music blaring. Like if you're killing people and like harvesting humans, like that's the last thing you're gonna do is want to cause an attraction, like a, attention to you. You're not gonna walk around with mask on and be blaring music. Like someone's gonna come and and ask what you know what's going on. <laughs> well, like, will they, of, Depends on how much land like they have. Weird, it seems like they have a lot of land. Like you start seeing weird people that are probably involved from the moment they run into that woman alongside the road. She's probably part of the whole thing. I just, yeah. uh, they're not, they're not, I don't think they're, they're to me, they didn't seem like they were trying to hide. Exactly. Um, Cause they probably you, didn't need to. Well, what I'm saying is if, <laughs> if someone sees a bunch of people wearing a mask, like that's going to cause a disturbance. Like if someone's going to ask what, like if, even the like the the cooks that's in the kitchen, they all have masks on. Like at some oh, point, someone's gonna on. somebody's gonna come in and see. Anyway, we're we're we're, we're spending too much time <laughs> on that. Uh, I, I would have liked to I got more story about the business. Like, I, okay, they're talking about doing some catering, but I don't know. They just there wasn't a whole lot in this movie. They could have gave me could have gave me something. Um, it just it just felt generic to me. It felt like everything was pulled from something I've already seen before, and I I, I would assume that it, it wasn't done better than what anything that I've already seen before. Um, the the cages is what drove me nuts too. That bugged me <laughs> crazy because I just trying to set one of those things up for my dog i would like collapse it by accident and knock it down like that drove me nuts um the the dude smashing the baby that caught me off guard that was so i mean i guess that's something uh i i just didn't like this movie i gave it a four all right i uh i really like the way this was shot i'm i'm definitely in in frank's boat on this one um, the, the actor that played, um, the, I called him the cabin keeper, basically the mm. boss, main guy, like he, he acted his ass off. I felt like he went like full into that character, like method style. And the, I don't know if they digitally contorted his face. I know he was doing the mouth stuff. I could tell that, but like with his ear and stuff like that and the way he was misshapen, I don't know. I, like in, they did it digitally in to that little girl in the um, the Hills Have Eyes remake. Hmm. Like know, the, it looked like a prosthetic to me. Yeah, is it a prosthetic? Okay. I don't know. It looked like it. I don't know. If, I, don't know. It, I don't think this film had the budget to do that well enough. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you can do a lot. I think I saw four that. million dollars on this. What? I'm that pretty seems, sure I saw that seems four, crazy. four million. That seems you can, crazy. You can fact check me, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure I saw four million. Wow. Wow. Where'd that go? Excuse me. They built that farm. <laughs> yeah, they built that farm. But made those people do it. <laughs> it's a nice farm, not really fucking nice place. Oh, that, off. That's I mean, why they're not saying anything. You know, I didn't really think about those dog cages until you guys said something. And I was like, Yeah, those things were like hamster cages, basically, mm-hmm. just wire thin. Uh, but I, that didn't bother me that much. I got what they were going for. Um, I really like the music, lots of strings. I, I really dug that. Uh, that oh, that insemination scene, mm. Yowza. that was <laughs> like a big old syringe of spooge. And there you yeah. go. Wonder like, where they got that wow, from. They're really, yeah. who, uh, who knows? Just a collection plate. Um, uh, oh. <laughs> Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Who's the lucky father kind of thing? Oh, God. 
That's so gross. See that, but but you know what? That would have added to the movie. Yeah, takes um, a village. There's, there's a shock. <laughs> yeah, but um, no, the uh, I do like a good shock. The baby that was, I know it was cheap, but it was shot well, and it looked good. So it was, it was like oh. Uh, you know, I, I, I made a physical noise. I was like, ah! You know, yeah. like, oh, yeah, like I, I, that I was really it. good. Um, what was I... I said in one part, well, when they gutted that girl, they definitely had to have used real animal parts because For sure. those were definitely way too realistic to not be real guts. Uh, so that was a good old school effect. Um, all of a sudden, Alex is just free. That's yeah. what I wrote. Yeah, I was like, so fuck, there's ten minutes right there. I could have seen him. Or, or five minutes. Give me five minutes. I was seeing him at least escape. They would have made it to him. And then she just leaves him behind. <laughs> Do you remember that? The, like, She just leaves him to die. Okay, <laughs> She's like, fuck it. I didn't like her. Yeah. She got on my damn nerves. Yeah. The whole, the whole time. She was. She um, would have been. They would have been safe if she would have listened. If he would have listened to her at the beginning, though, because she was just like, hey, oh, "Let's yeah. just keep going." And I and I told I told my wife that that's the type of situation that my anxiety would have saved us because I would have been like, "Fuck no, we're not doing that. We're not yeah, going no there. Way. We are going to a sheet. <laughs> <laughs> we are fighting a sheet. Yeah, and we will stop there." Lights and people. <laughs> I wouldn't even stop in Cleveland until we found a McDonald's. So I was like, no, it's got to be like a TM trademark location. I need to, I can't stop at Dave's uh, corner market, you know, with bars <laughs> in the windows. Gotta, oh my God. Yeah, find, so funny. find a fucking corporate entity. <laughs> um, One thing that got on my nerves that chase scene. Um, yeah. At the end, it was not intense at all. Like I was, you want me to be on the edge of my seat? The music was just so lame right there. It was so light and subdued. I was like, "What the yeah, heck, man? Where's them hard the, the strings?" Music, the at? music was spotty. Like at times, I'd be like, "What? This is they do a really good job of this." And I'd be like, "Yeah, what, why? It's it's clearly not right." Well, I don't know. That's just my opinion. No, 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 no. You're you're right. This movie did have its problems, but it was. I feel like a really good starting off point for a possibly cool series. And then what maybe, you know, it's maybe it becomes a cult classic. Uh, we'll see more about this cult. Cause there was the church and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was like a compound. Yeah. Like Jones this is the, Town this is style. where we start. And then we do, we, anything can happen from here. Yeah. You can make all yeah. the dumb, weird ones that have three or right. four different main wild characters. A spinoff yeah. could be like one of the customers. I feel like I felt like people know what they're doing. Yeah. That's 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 why I, I didn't agree with your one point, Jason, about the, you how think they know they're, I feel they're like serving? oh yeah, hell yeah. Oh, well, that I, really, would, I mean, <laughs> that because there's be too really many crazy, people. But... That's like that's like that's what I'm like saying. Out in the out that way, it's too many people to not be. Organized. I don't think they know what they. I don't know. Maybe they do, but I guess either way, you would complain about finding a tooth in your food. Like even yeah. if you know it's human, right. you gotta get the teeth yeah. out. You can't, you can't be serving it's teeth. teeth. <laughs> right. uh, I love it. it had style. Um, like I said, it was it's a good jumping off point. It probably would have worked better as a short, to be honest. Like no more than a half hour. It would have been way more intense and, and jarring that way. Because it's like okay. okay, you get it's on I the farm. We don't have right. to. We don't have to tour the whole fucking farm. But they bought it. We don't need to see every. <laughs> I, 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 they, we yeah, got budget, but I don't need it. to see every outbuilding you have, dude. <laughs> Come on, I get it. Um, yeah. the whole. I like the Last Supper theme, but what I hated was the girls just looked spray tanned. Yeah, and their there hair was, was not no, burnt. Their hair was perfect. It wasn't right? burnt up. Like they weren't really cooked. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, <laughs> make them look like they were. Put a ball Shit. cap on uh, them. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> throw, throw, throw some 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 like I don't know fried chicken skin on them. Yeah, for yeah, texture or something. Give me something. You it's know what? The best thing they could have done. Can. 
they could have done what they could what they could do with this is they could make they already bought the farm right we've established that they yeah, just make they that a, they make that an attraction after covid people can go to the farm and you know there's all the people with the masks they get to eat there and assume that it's people um and it's fucking real yeah <laughs> <laughs> it turns out just being yeah. fucking real but what what did you give this john oh uh, I, I gave it a six it definitely wasn't perfect but it's it had some good bones to it there's something there mm-hmm. definitely yeah there's a, it's a, <laughs> a bedrock let's call it yeah it's a, it's a generic take on texas chainsaw massacre with <laughs> you know, hey, I like the undertones. And those, I like those a good. Are, those are creepy masks. I like, uh, you know, but no, they look like every other mask you wear. Like even the mask. That's what I'm saying. Like everything was borrowed from something well, else. Yeah. Like even the mask. Like I think those same masks. That I've I've seen the. Same I like masks delivery pizza, but I also like frozen pizza. Yeah, oh, yeah, all the other pizza is good. <laughs> 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 I agree. <laughs> um. Let's go to 1986. Yeah, <laughs> let's, go, <laughs> let's go to 1986 for Witchboard. Um, summary for this film: When his girlfriend becomes dangerously obsessed with a ghost, she contacted using a Ouija board. Ouija board. Jim reluctantly joins forces with her ex, his own estranged childhood best friend, to identify and exorcise the evil spirit. <sighs> Written and directed by Kevin Tenney, who did Night of the Demons and one of my favorites, Pinocchio's Revenge. (laughs) Uh, Do you have any information, Jason? Tagline, this game could be fatal. Distributed by Palisades Entertainment and out on Blu-ray through Scream Factory again in 2014. Uh, Old Kevin Tenney also composed the music for this film, and I think he did a great job. Uh, Might be the best thing happening here um i don't know how you guys feel but <laughs> um this dude who owns the ouija ouija is that how we're saying this that's, ouija oh, it's ouija. a ouija board just ouija ouija. Yeah, that, guy, ouija. that guy that guy that guy tried to search it um, up so hard what a jerk that guy that is guy. probably one of the <laughs> most one of the most punchable dick holes oh. i've ever seen in any movie uh, he yeah. reminds me of Eric Bischoff from WCW. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Remember yeah, he has that same hair. A blonde, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Like from his condescending explanation of this board to his constant references to this guy's alcoholic father. I think he's fairly lucky that he ended up with just a pop tire that first night. Um he even tries to get in uh, Tawny Katane's head by saying he's never, she's never seen her boyfriend cry. Um, I haven't seen most people I know cry. I don't assume they're all murderers. Uh, I haven't seen you guys cry. I don't assume you <laughs> killed anybody. I don't know. Uh, I don't understand why there would be a murder investigation over the incidents that happened in this movie. Uh, it seems fairly much like an accident from get go. The cop is really forced into this yeah. scenario um i remember why i hated this movie i had this on vhs never got through it i couldn't give a shit about ouija boards and i find all of brandon's rants about this thing just as stupid and laughable as jim does uh and the movie is boring so that's my main problems with it the medium is a terrible irritating character they bring in halfway through um adds to the overall disappointment of this movie the only amusing thing about her is that she rattles like a set of janitor's keys when she walks around in her ridiculous outfit um i fucking dozed off at my computer around one hour woke up to tawny screaming as she threw herself around the room i was like what the fuck is going on here This movie took me three sessions. I could not stay awake. I couldn't stay awake. (laughs) They should have called it Witch Board. (laughs) because for sure. Between, I mean, the whole dialogue between the two male (laughs) leads discussing their love and their relationships with Tawny, it's as if a horror film about a board game isn't slow enough. We've got to have this whole drawn-out exposition between these two characters and it doesn't matter i think these two dudes might be in love or something i don't know what they're trying to push forward in this scene but it takes forever 
uh, at an hour and 23 minutes, you get a fairly cool hatchet kill. A after a stupid looking Starsky and Hutch style and stunt involving barrels, um, oh, yeah. we uh, say goodbye to Brandon. Uh, he dies. We find, out, we find out this is where we find out that Jim Jim might have been in love with him the whole time because he like cries and holds his body for uh, as long as you yeah, hold a lover. They were best friends. They used to be best friends. Yeah, and then they had a long time of hating each other. Um, then a girl came between them, and then you know, it's the same old story, really. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Tales all the time. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you see it, it really, all the time. It really is. Brandon was yeah. just a just seemed like a just a douchebag. Yeah. Anyway, I bet he was a douchebag all the all his the life. Bracelets. Wooja. 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 Uh, no. Fuck um, you. Um, do you cannot anger David? Okay. <sighs> David, or is that you? He's got a secret sign. Well, fuck you. Uh, yeah, I, just, yeah, I hate really. this movie. A figure eight. I hate this movie. I think it's a cash in on Tawny Katane's White Snake popularity. Um, that th music video came out. They're like, hey, that's a woman. And then they just put her in a movie. She's smoking. She's smoking hot. <laughs> I, I say this is a two out of ten. Um, Jeez Louise. I wanted to like oh, wait, it. I love the, the, the exact up. I love the this. I love the cover of this movie. I love all the artwork I've seen for it. Hate the film. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'll go. Yeah, I'm I want to hear it. Let's do this. We got. I mean, it ain't. I mean, it ain't spectacular. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Uh, supernatural, supernatural horror. This is my first time viewing this one. Uh, th this just feels good to me. This has a very strong slasher vibe to it. Um, it's got it's got some cheese in it for sure. Drags and spots, not a lot of kills. Certainly think there's pacing issues, so I get how you can kind of like drift off and be a little All bored with it completely. <laughs> yeah, uh, I like the characters. Like I, the, even the, the the blonde douchebag, like he plays. A blonde douchebag very really well. Good at it. <laughs> he does. Yes, he does a good job of it. Uh, I like the score. I like the cinematography. Some of the camera, sh like the first person uh, camera modes that have going. Those shots, I, I thought those were good. The drywall falling on that dude like took me by surprise. It made me like say, "Oh shit!" Like I was not. It was such. I guess maybe kind of a slow, sleepy scene, and then all of a sudden that. That just smashes him. It, it, I thought that was great. Um, I liked it. I'm going to be picking this up. I, it's on my list to get. I give it a seven. Huh. What so you got, John? This is a first timer for me too. Always seen the box or in HBO Guide or whatever. You know what I mean? Always, I was always aware of it. Because there's how many sequels? Is there like thirteen sequels? There's a lot, and I think. Oh something. God, I didn't know that. No, I yeah, it's, it's like it's crazy. There's, but I knew there was there's two also of like Witch that. House and all Witch that. Witch House, that's the other ones. There's oh, a bunch of them. Okay, so yeah. I didn't know that that had anything to do with. Okay, yeah, same. I don't guys, know if it same do, writer. But, you know that. There's a same oh. writer or director, or something like that. I saw it looking so through the credits somehow. Okay. Yeah, same writer. Right. And this yeah, okay. isn't this his first movie? Is it this? Kevin Tenney's first movie. Uh, I don't think so. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. I thought it was. I don't know. I was going to. If it was, I, I guess that just makes it a little bit more impressive for me too. I, if this is, I thought if this is his first movie, I think it's a hell of a first movie. Hmm. Fact cool. check me, Frank. Go ahead. I'm gonna pull him up and see. Yeah, what it no, is. no problem. Um, I like seeing Tony Katan. I always liked her. She's super cute. Smoking hot. You know, but you know, you have Tawny Katan for for a reason, and they didn't get to that reason. <laughs> uh, I actually happen to like Zarabeth. She was funny as shit because she was some. She was a breath of fresh air of all the boring shit in that. Movie. She was a she was annoying and, at first. I thought like I don't like. It was her like her accent she was doing the valley something. girl shit. It was that valley. It, girl. Oh it, yeah, it, it faded as it, as it went on, and she became less annoying. I've seen that lady. Her name's Kathleen Wilhoyt. 
she's been in tons of stuff as a bit player and she always brings some weird energy to it like you're you notice her um she, i thought i found her funny her death was cool on the sundial but she got her throat cut and then got thrown on the sundial right that was that was so. your effects budget right there Just, yeah, right. <laughs> that was your that was your blood budget right there no that was cool um Tawny throwing herself across the room. Come on. That was so bad. That was <laughs> no, so yeah. bad. Oh yeah. my god. She just bleh. um I do I can't remember who who was it? Was it Tawny in the shower? Did she punch yeah. her way out? Yeah, okay. I give her a lot of credit for that because a lot of chicks just would have or I should say, pardon me, a lot of characters. <laughs> may have just been like, oh, I can't get out of it, I can't break this glass, I'm gonna get scalded to death. You know what I mean? She did. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah, that was really cool. And then the um, oh, the terribly awesome <laughs> shooting of the goddamn witchboard. That was hilarious. <laughs> All that green screen in that entire. Oh yeah. Scene and, the, and it just looked like a a, a bad western. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like they made it for 3D markets for some reason, but never released it in 3D. Uh, <laughs> it, it was like Jaws 3 vibes all day. It was funny. Um, but, I mean, those are only a couple parts of an hour and 42 minutes of yuppies. Not really, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, like, don't get me wrong. I agree. That dude played his uh, part really good. But he... Argue, his, they were just arguing the validity of a Ouija board through yeah. most of this movie. Oh, and when they were in the... When they were on... The two dudes were on the barrel and they had it. Oh, that was... or the, Yeah, they had it on the barrel. And, oh, God. Oh, on. they went to where the little boy drowned? Yeah. Is that where And they were moving in. They're like, whoa, whoa. What's, <laughs> what's yeah, going on? Yeah, it was so bad. Uh, like I, I, I felt like that was a Milton Bradley Ouija board because the box was in the movie. Yeah, you saw it. That's probably who put up some money for it. You know, this was definitely a sponsor. Make it a cursed Ouija board or something. Make it carved know. out of wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some production value on that. You know, but like, give make me care, not just Tawny Katane be like. Ooh, David, hi. Are you nice? Shut up. No. <laughs> like, just stop. This, I, gave this, I gave it a four. Like, yeah. it was... I won't watch it again, though. But it had... It, it was shot well. Um, the music was cool. That one... Uh, Zerbeth was a redemption. A, a, a small... So I gave it, still gave it a four, you know, <laughs> but she, she's part of a reason it got a four, <laughs> you yeah. know. Um, so. This was uh, Kevin Tenney's first movie, followed it up with Night of the Demons and then Witch Trap. And then he also did uh, Witchboard 2. And Witch okay. Trap, I don't so know. So is Witch Trap any, have anything to Heard do with Probably, yeah, probably it's not. Got, well, no, it's got the same, um, you know, that dude, the. The but guy it came out before Witchboard Two. Yeah, you know the guy from uh, that shows up at the end. He's like the demon or whatever. The he looks like a knight kind of. He's the guy on the cover. It looks like the same guy on the cover of Witch Trap. Um, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know either. I don't know, man. I don't think I'll probably <laughs> go any any further than this one. The Kevin Tenney extended universe. Um, <sighs> totally. <laughs> let's get into 1988's phantasm 2 um summary for this film mike now released from a psychiatric hospital continues his journey to stop the evil tall man from his grim work written and directed by don coscarelli uh jason do you have any information tagline now the horrifying this has a few but this is the one i wrote down now the horrifying truth is about to be revealed and all it took was a little digging <laughs> distributed by Universal, and this one's out through Scream Factory as well, also out of print in 2013. Uh, cast highlights for this film, uh, I'm not sure how to say this, James LaGrosse, LaGrosse, LaGro, 
Uh, okay. he, he was in Drugstore Cowboy, and I know him. I've never seen that, but I have you ever seen Scotland, PA, guys? Nope. It's basically Macbeth, but it's done in um, fast food restaurants. Um, he plays he plays Mac, the Macbeth character. It's, you should watch it. It's got Christopher Walken in it, and he's fucking fantastic. Oh. Um, but it's this. We have Reggie Bannister back as Reggie. Um, they had to make a decision whether to keep Mike or not. It was a, the the producers were, had their thumbs in this thing and kind of made some rules and regulations. Um, since it had been so long between the other you know it's almost a decade um they didn't want to get mike because he hadn't done anything he hadn't been active and reggie had to audition to get his role so uh, of course angus was probably um you know involved from the beginning um samantha phillips as alchemy uh (laughs) storied actress featured in classic films such as stalking obsession focus on feet Eve's Beach Fantasy, Andromeda, The Pleasure Planet, The Escort 3, The Bear Wench Project 2, Scared Topless, and yeah. much, much more. <laughs> She's He's like, working. Um, J, you have J. Patrick McNamara in this film, who you may recognize uh, as Bill S. Preston's father in the first two Bill and Ted's movies. He plays the psychologist. Um He's married to Missy and oh, glasses. Oh, really? Bill's dad, yeah. Wow. I remember I those damn that. movies? Oh, you got to watch them. They're the classics, I remember man. him, but I... I've watched wow. those a million times. That was crazy. That's crazy. Um, I had no idea. Huh. Another little fun cast highlight, Lori Laughlin. You know who that is? Aunt Becky from oh, yeah. Bull House. <laughs> she plays Mike from the back. You know how, like, the yeah, at the beginning of this movie, they piece together... Scenes with young yeah, Mike, Mike, and then the house <laughs> blows up. Yeah, she's the b- back of his head. She's so, the butt. One, yeah, one of her first roles. Um, oh wow! You gotta love a scene where characters are preparing to go to battle. Like, there's this great montage or series of events where Reggie's like making his super shotgun, and oh, yeah. uh, Mike's testing out the flamethrower situation. Um, it prepares you for some serious action, which I don't know if you really get to i mean they don't use the shit they they don't use it as much as they you know but it's phantasm so um and mike wouldn't be able to see shit with that welding mask on uh (laughs) i mean for real it looks cool but unrealistic um the mutated version of liz uh that they run across while they're hunting for the tall man is straight out of a nightmare on elm street movie i don't know if they were trying to pull some she like that, but she's got like a little head, like a tall man head growing out of her back. It looks very Freddy Krueger like. Oh um, yeah. I I think this movie would have worked a lot better with the original Mike. I like the storyline, even though there's a bunch of shit I still don't understand. Um, in fact, I feel slightly more confused about the reality of Phantasm. Are the Gravers a creation of Tall Man? Or yeah. is he like hiring them through a temp agency? I don't understand. <laughs> no, nah, uh, they're like under his his control. They're like, um, yeah. they're 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 basically zombies. Okay, they're basically zombies. So, um, Just, the that's spheres, why they wear all the, um, masks. the spheres in this movie are really awesome. Uh, mm-hmm. He Tall Man really gave him like a Tim Allen tune up because they've got like a a lot more activity happening. Um, you can see the, the studio thumbprints all over this movie of whether it was shoehorning in love interests um, for Mike and uh, Reggie. Um, the pacing of the film seems kind of counterintuitive for a Coscarelli film. It seems like they were like, you, this is kind of an action movie. You got to get it. It's got to be an action. You know, I think he would have had a slower pace, a little bit different, you know, it's just, just compared to the first movie there's a different vibe. Um, mm-hmm. The mortician's death is the highlight of the film. Um, for, as far as kills are concerned, uh, he gets a full treatment. Um, okay. Oh, God, it's, it's, it's gory as hell. Um, the chainsaw battle uh, reminded me of Texas chainsaw massacre two, uh, mixed with princess bride. 
And it seems like maybe the studio was like, these are two cool things you could mash together. Why don't you try that out? <laughs> um, uh, and it bothered me that Reggie just left his super shotgun behind. He just kind of tosses it. Um, he spent a lot of time making that thing, you know, like, you know, one shot. He, you just go pick up your bandolier, you know, he cut, he cut his bandolier off. Yeah. I, this is definitely a cool movie. Um, it's not as good as the original, but I think it's a nice entry. I give it a seven out of 10. Like I said, if they would have had Michael Baldwin back in as Mike, it would have got a nine or a 10 probably because I think it would have had this had better. Uh, they vibe those characters vibe really well. So the chemistry, they yeah. had chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Great sequel. Uh, I, I think I like this as much as the, the first one, to be honest. Uh, good cast. I like the characters. Reggie, Angus, good as always. Very weird, nightmarish, surreal, phantasm movie. It uh, has some cheesy 80s effects, Good some good practical effects, decent amount of gore in this one. Uh, good score. The, the atmosphere is there again. It still didn't didn't answer some of the questions I had from, from the first one. In fact, it brought up some more. Um, I, I was wondering who the, who the human people were like, how, how, why are they left human like and not shrunk down to the dwarves and kind of where they came from, how they're related to, or, you know, under tall man's spell or whatever. He got him through um, a deco. <laughs> Snaps. <laughs> you know, Mike and Liz being connected, like through dreams and stuff, like that, that kind of raised some questions up. Uh, but the highlight for me, though, is is the spear that goes in that guy, uh, is tossing him around the room and comes up yeah. through his mouth. Like that was that was a great kill. That was a great scene. Um, I really like this one. I I give it an eight. Yeah. Like I said before, this Phantasm is my uh, favorite franchise. Um, This year, I agree a hundred percent. I wish it would have been Michael Baldwin in there. Just the chemistry that they had. I mean, it, it was, it was really good. It was like one of those rare ones. Cause like they knew, they're, they're like still best friends to this day and, and Bill Thornberry too. Like pretty much all the living cast like still work together and talk and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it it's a deep a deep chemistry in that in that franchise. So they didn't even uh, give the guy an audition? No, so here's so here's what I in in the, there's this book called Phantasm Exhumed by Dustin McNeil. It's like the it's one of two phantasm like tell all type deals. Right. So um, they told Coscarelli that have them both audition. And Reggie did. They liked them. Mike did. They didn't. They were never going to pick Mike. Hmm. And this is a, now please understand this is a book with like interviews of people like this, this like people that were working at MGM at the time or universe, which was universal. Right. Yep. I don't yep. know why, I don't know why I keep thinking MGM um, or MCA or something like that, but like um, it's interviews with people that know the, the deal itself. It's not like a puff piece. Like they tell what, what happened and things like that. And he, uh, he they just didn't go with him because he wasn't a working actor. Brad Pitt even auditioned to be Mike. Yeah. That's huh. crazy. How crazy would that have been? And you know, who, you know who the studio fucking wanted to play Reggie? Jeffrey Tambor. Oh yeah, Can that would have oddly that? worked. That would have worked. I don't know. Uh-oh. The quad barrel shotgun. I don't see. I don't see Mister Bluth with a with a sh- quad barrel shotgun. <laughs> like <Yeah>. Mark. <laughs> Mark. Yeah. We have things to do. The thing I don't understand is, even if they didn't want to cast Mike as Mike, why didn't they find somebody that looked like Mike that was a better actor? Because they didn't really, he didn't really look like Mike at all. 
No, not even. You had to just wanted, buy it. <laughs> they wanted a new leading man, handsome looking guy, and they landed on him. The yeah. guy that looks like um, the dude from the bad guy from Cobra. <laughs> What's that guy's name? I want to say Brian. Is it Brian Johnson? I feel I'm like that's sure. his name, but I'm like, then I think about, wait, that's ACDC. Hold on. Because <laughs> <laughs> I get confused. <laughs> um, it's, you're right. This brings up a whole lot more questions that will probably never get answered. The whole, so there's this psychic link between certain people in the Phantasm universe. Liz and Mike, she had visions of of Mike. She saw his entire adventure. They, they fell in love with each other. <laughs> well, well, she fell in love with, with him. They talk about her side more. But okay. um I mean I mean in this film, not ever, not afterwards. Uh, but um they um Ah oh, shit, I forgot where I was going with it. Uh, Anyways, whatever. Uh, whatever. Um oh yeah, the psychic links. That's how a tall man has control of his people. In the first one, remember when Mike was hiding in the casket and the dude that the caretaker was just about to lift it up and tall man just walks in without a word. He turns around, they have a quick stare down and he walks out. He's got mind control mm. over these people. Uh, the gravers, the, um, the, the two uh, mortician guys. Uh, so he can pretty much do, he even froze Mike in the first one. When he threw him in the back of the hearse, that's why he had that weird that weird pose. He looked all weird. Remember, <laughs> yeah. Tall Man carried him and threw him in the back. It looked weird, right? That's because yeah. he froze him. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, obviously, you see where all the money is, and there was a ton more money in this, more than one sphere. Um, elaborate effects from Mark Showstrom and KNB, which was great. Right after Evil Dead, I'm pretty sure right after Evil Dead 2, this was their movie. Right after that. So, that's why, if you pay attention, when they're the the one mortician in the crematorium, he's dust, he's dump, dumping the bones. Oh, yeah. That little yeah, puddle, it, it says Sam, Sam Raimi. Raimi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They were like buddies, and he was on the set a bunch and stuff. So, right. they threw that in there for him. Um. A thing that was introduced in this movie that I love is the 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 little symbolic line that said once a once a movie let's go we've got things to do. That's the Star Wars. I have a bad feeling about this. That that that's uttered throughout by someone different in the in the <laughs> in the, like all at least once in the movies. So mm. that that was just a a fun a fun nugget. Um. Yeah, the, I, you you said you didn't like the little tumor puppet Freddy looking thing. You didn't like that. No, I I liked it. I just think it looked like it was out of Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I mean okay. it looked and and like it looks like the studio was looking at stuff that had come out before this and been like okay. uh, we could put a little flavor of that in there and you know how uh, studios probably. are they're always like calculating okay. things like like how after home alone ever they wanted everything to be like home alone and that's why movies like uh never ending story three oh. they tried to make it like home alone and they like cut out a tray you and shit <laughs> which doesn't make sense but you know studios fuck everything up and they they didn't fuck this one up too much i don't think uh uh, at all they didn't they made some use more of it give me more of it by they wanted the they wanted to have the romantic uh love interest for reggie and um you know some other things but they could have really been crazy and been like we need ghosts now or whatever you know like you know you the one story you always hear about is the the uh, Kevin Smith story about how he was going to make that Superman movie and the producer he talked to wanted to have Superman fight a giant spider. And then that producer ended up making wild, wild West where <laughs> at the end of it, there's a giant spider. <laughs> like this dude was just spider. <laughs> invested in having a giant spider. So they could have done anything, you know, producers are nuts. So um, I really enjoyed uh, the priest, Kevin, Kenneth Tegar, I believe his name. Yeah, Kenneth he was, Tegar. He was good. He was 
he was a he was really good in his part. Um, his drill his drill death was cut. Obviously, you could tell. Mm-hmm. You know, there's blood there's blood sounds when there's no blood, and so check this out. In Germany, there's a an edition of the DVD. I have it. The it's a two disc set. There's a work print edition on the second disc. It's like it's almost like two hours long. Like it's way or I I can't remember the runtime. It's way longer. Lots more stuff. It's like everything they cut out or could have cut out was in that. There's this whole weird mystical love scene between Mike and Liz. Well, remember when when they wake up in bed and they're just they're just talking to mm-hmm. each other with their heads. There's this whole bad green screen thing. They're both naked and it's like switch change it. I remember, just remember scenery morphing into different shit. They're like transcending time and space. Oh yeah. Like there's this whole subplot of like different dimensions, um past lives, psychic links, like it's, probably dream sequences too because that was all the shit they wanted to cut out. They didn't want right. any like they wanted a linear storyline with no dream sequences or a, like fantasy or they wanted mm-hmm. to be cut and dry and that's what they kind of got. They even I there was more dream stuff in it than I thought they would. I mean, they there was still some in it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And uh, you know they give you a taste of the of the work print on um, the the uh, Scream Factory. Yeah, I was going to ask if, if if that was on there. Yeah, only I'm I'm talking snippets. Like there's ex- extended scenes, and the best part is they use the for sound effects and music they use from the original. So that is that. Too. What, is that a se- is that on is that a separate. Uh, movie or do they have it uh edited into the the, oh no it's its own the restoration print no it's its own feature oh okay on on, yeah on the dvd the german dvd edition that i have of part two it's its own it's a separate feature movie yes screen factory just has it edited in no, no, no. Just as a special feature of deleted scene. Oh, okay. All right. It's not edited. No, 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 no. They didn't edit you. that kind of stuff. But that would have been nuts if they would have put that dream sequence in. Yeah, it, it, just, it, it, it bugs reason. me. Like when you get, when they, they, they find, you know, lost footage and for some reason it can't be restored to, like, you'll see that, like, the, the bonus. I can't think. Like, ah. Uh, off the top like, of my head. But like the added Friday footage. Two, like Friday Part 2, look, they could have just threw those snippets in. Even if it, well, it just don't it don't look it's not the same quality as like the theatrical cut like for, for oh, whatever reason they can't restore it I don't understand eh. no. but, but um that's cool yeah and then, and, then, and there's stuff they used from the work print like the tall man coming back is at the beginning of part three so it's like you see his little you know obviously he's back he, he's driving the hearse. You know, so it's not a spoiler. <laughs> so, um, you know, you see little bits and pieces. Um, and it's cleaned up. Don't get me wrong. It's it, it was releasable. You know what I mean? So they cleaned it up. Like seeing the red, a little bit more of the red, red dimension. Um, I like the little dwarf that crawled out of the barrel. Uh, he was played by Bob Gale. Um, he played like Howard the Duck. And a lot of, I, I don't know, he's got a pretty big filmography. Um, tall, man's, tall Man's Death was rad. They melted him. I like the little monster that comes out. You see more of that <laughs> shit in, um, in, the, in the other ones. Like, they expand on that. So that's awesome. Like, this, this set up a, a, a decent amount. But it wasn't, it wasn't really a Oscarelli-esque film. You know, it would have been paced different. This was more of a road movie action, sort of action horror. Um, but I, I still love it. I, I gave it a nine. A nine for me. Like I said, it's my favorite. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a fun movie. I think most people would enjoy it. Um, well, next uh, next episode we're going to be doing a club episode, and our review will be Wolf Cop. 
which won the poll. <laughs> um, we'll also be returning to our RPG game because Ray is out of uh, COVID hell, I guess. Woo! Out of the woods. Um, so he'll be back, and, and uh, we'll have Dave back in the mix. Yep. And we will carry on that adventure, and we'll we'll show off some uh, some new, some new stuff we got if we got some stuff. I know John got some new stuff. I've seen yeah. a lot of toys. He's toying around over there. So. I know, man. I've been on this kick. I pre-ordered that freaking Harry Warden from Shout Factory. Did you guys see that? <laughs> uh, I have not seen uh, that. Yeah, they're they're doing a minor kick. They're doing I, a minor uh, NECA. I, uh, I sent my. I sent my wife the link just a few days ago. I said, this comes, I think it comes out February 9th. Perfect for Valentine's Day. I said, this don't come out till February, but the pre-order's up. I'm just saying they're going to go fast. <laughs> I, was, I was laying it on pretty thick, so we'll see if I can. Oh, get yeah. yeah. I'm so mad I never got that Tom Atkins figure. I'm so mad at myself. It looks like three hundo now. It's crazy. Yeah. They never come out when I have money. Like it's hard. It, I always have to end up paying more because I can't get it when they come out. Yeah. yeah. There's oh, always man. ones I see that I want, but God damn, it's a lot of work to track them down. And I only want specific things. And then by the Thank time you. I can find them, they're like 40 fucking dollars or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyways, That'll be next time uh, on the last round of Horror Club. Thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys. See you, John. See you, Blake. All right. See you guys.